Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today I have for you a replay featuring the Vickers Mark 7-2. Uh, and I'm also Blatoon with the Red Queen, who is running her Vickers Mark 7-2, and Desert, who is running his M1A1 AIM. Take a quick lo look over the tank here. Now, it does have a unique camo. It's actually pretty cool. It's pretty much a black paint. Got a Union Jack paint on the roof. Union Jack's paint on the sides, except for this is actually the wrong tank. Ah, uh, there we go. There's mine. And it's actually got a girl sitting on a beer keg on the by the driver's hatch. Pretty nifty looking vehicle. And pretty useless as well. We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> So I'll talk here real quickly about the tank as well. In 1982, the Vickers Valiant was redes the Vickers Valiant turret was redesigned to replace the L7 105mm rifle gun to mount a 120mm gun. The redesigned turret was able to mount either the L11 British 120mm rifled gun, get to that in a bit, as well, or the Rheinmetall L44 smoothbore gun or a French 120 mm smoothbore gun. The turret was mounted onto a complete Leopard 2 hull. This would include the MTU MB873 KA 501 V12 twin turbo diesel engine. The engine produces 1500 horsepower. The Vickers Mark 7 was des designed. To replace the Challenger 1, however, the Vickers Mark 7 was not adopted. But lessons learned from the Mark 7 would go into developing the Challenger 2. The Vickers Mark 7 would be later put on the export market, but no tanks would be sold. Later, a similar turret with many improvements would be mounted on the EE-T1 or Cyril MBT. To this date, only one Vickers Mark 7 would be built. And there you go, folks. That's the history and the development of the Vickers. There's not a whole lot here to say about the tank. Um, now, in Armored Warfare, we'll talk about it a bit. It is a Tier 8 Premium uh, that, for some odd reason, in, this, in the information, it says it actually mounts the German 120 millimeter L44 gun. However, if you look at the model closely, you will see it's actually mounting the uh, L11 120 millimeter main there. gun, Helicopter which is the British main gun. You. Now, they, it is interesting that the uh, Vickers would actually put a turret of their design onto a leopard hull but understand at the time they were doing trials on leopard tanks as well because the british military was possibly looking at getting leopard tanks to replace the challenger one however that would not come to fruition instead they would go with the indigenous challenger two at the end of the day um i'm not going to say it's the smartest move especially looking at the military's situation right now with the Challenger 2. Yeah, I got a whole detail about that in another video. That being said though, in Armored Warfare, it's a tier eight premium main battle tank. And I just wanna be clear, honestly, it's not a very good one. Um, the gun is the equivalent of the M1A2, which isn't bad in itself. However, 
the Vickers here, Vickers Mark 7, suffers from a slower reload. Now the accuracy is slightly improved, being closer to that of the Rheinmetall L44 gun versus the American M256 120 millimeter smoothbore gun. Even though they're the same guns, they apparently react differently in uh, armored warfare reasons. Um, the next problem with this vehicle is it doesn't share the mobility that the Abrams does or that the Leopard does. Well, actually, I think it's slightly more mobile than the Abrams, but still less mobile than the Leopard 2 of the same tier, which would be the Leopard 2 A5. Next thing it would suffer from is a huge glaring weak spot at the turret ring and front hall. Um, it, it does not have the same armor package that the Leopard 2 at tier 8 has. Instead, it has a closer armor package to the tier 7 Leopard 2. So it suffers from weak armor. Surprise there, I bounced two shots. It also does not have any sort of APS, as the vehicle was not designed with an APS. Didn't exist at the time. Now, in Armored Warfare, this is actually a quite old vehicle. Um, but comparing it to the other Tier 8 main battle tanks of this tier, the only thing that could possibly be worse is the M1A1 AIM. Now, that being said, it does have a highly accurate gun, so it can work as a sniper. Uh, you just don't want to take any hits, because except for the turret cheeks and the gun mantlet, anything can pen this. Now, unfortunately, this time, I actually do not have the match results. It is actually how the tank, the replay saved in the game. Um... But I would actually do 14,317 damage. I actually wrote that down. It, it, I write that down to help bookmark what replay I want to air. Um, and actually, total said than done, I would be actually number two in damage behind the Griffin. Now, if you were paying attention to the map, you would have seen that the Red Queen and her Vickers Mark Seven. And that desert in his M1A1 aim actually ran off to help deal with objectives. So that kind of gave me a chance to get in there and take a couple more cracks at enemy vehicles that I normally would not have. And the Terminator was honestly completely worthless. He barely broke 6,000 damage. So basically it was between, it was a, a very mediocre game between myself, Desert, and Red Queen with a great game actually coming out of the Griffin that played with us. He actually scored over 20,000 damage himself. So the question remains, would I recommend this vehicle? No, I would not recommend this vehicle. I mean, yeah, it's a good sniper, but let's be honest. Uh, a vehicle cannot always rely on sniping. Um, maybe in PvP where you could work on let, allow... Uh, scouts and spotters to do all the spotting for you and you just do the shooting it would work in that scenario but it's a very specific scenario that will not always be there um, and it's just it's got huge glaring weak spots on the turret and even around the gun mantlet so it's it's a pretty easy vehicle to penetrate from the front um, I would actually say it's probably one of the easiest uh, considering main battle tanks and even matching up to the Terminator. Uh, so just in all honesty, I, I, I asked to do a re I asked the community, community management team to allow me to do a review on this tank. And it kind of pains me to give a bad review for the tank. I think it probably could use a slight armor buff, and it probably could use a, a much better reload. I, out of all the vehicles I can think of at Tier 8 that are main battle tanks, the only thing that's possibly slower than this may be the Al Hussein Hybrid, which is the new challenger at Tier 8, and uh, probably the C1 Ariette. Other than that, 
this thing just gets left in the dust for damage. Um, it gets left in the dust for armor. It just comes off to me as a vehicle that was added to the game a long time ago and has been kind of kicked off to the side and forgotten. And the power creep has greatly overtaken this vehicle. Um, so I will leave it at that, that no, I do not recommend this vehicle. And hopefully with everything I said here today, that uh, maybe, just maybe, in the near future, we'll see some kind of buff to this vehicle and make it worth buying again. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching this replay. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you appreciated the information and in my opinion of the vehicle I had given you today. Thank you very much again for watching and hopefully I will see you again for the next video.